So I'm currently sitting in my dirty kitchen. I'm waiting for the kids' lunch to get out of the oven and then they're gonna have their lunch. We're going to do an afternoon clean. And then hopefully I'm gonna sit down and really talk about quiet time and why I love my quiet time, but the few rules and behaviors that you wanna to have to make it successful in your home. So my kids are currently eating lunch in the next room. You can probably hear them conversing. And I'm going to clean my kitchen while they're doing that. And then they are going to either go to bed, the little ones go to bed, and my older ones go and play and quiet time begins. I am wearing my workout clothes because in this quiet time I have scheduled to film this video and do a workout. It's been about half an hour since I was in the kitchen and the kids were eating. So in that time they've eaten. They have done their chores, they've tidied up the dining room, I clean the kitchen, I feel like I have a little bit more control of my living areas right now and I'm having a cup of coffee and let's just listen for a moment. There are some days, I will admit, when I live for this time of day. <laughs> anyway, this camera's really heavy so I'm going to put it up. I'm currently sitting at my desk. I've got my post up so I can keep some kind of clear rhythm. If you don't know who I am, this is only my third video here in the land of YouTube. I am Sinead. I am a second generation homeschooler. I also have a blog called thesimplemama.com which is all about motherhood, child training, and I'm also currently doing a few things that I do with pregnancy because I am actually well and truly into my second trimester of my sixth pregnancy. And so I have thought, well, that's another thing that I can share as I go, which is why there was such a huge gap between my first video and my second video. There was like a couple of months in there when I promised they'll be back the next week. That is because um, I pretty much fell off the face of the earth with morning sickness. I had probably my worst bout of morning sickness I've ever had and I stopped everything. But I'm back and I feel like I'm still recovering from that. I'm still trying to get my house in order. I'm still trying to get a rhythm and um, but definitely still practicing <clears throat> my quiet time. If I didn't have quiet time I would not get anything done. So let's talk about quiet time. So quiet time, it is exactly what it sounds. It is a period of quiet in your home. And I have this every day for at least two hours a day. Quiet time is something that I think should be in every home. I think that I know a lot of people go, oh, well, quiet time's not for me and it's not something that we do, but it is good for the children and for the parents. It's good for a homeschool family or if you're not a homeschool family, if you have older children or young children, it really, I don't think quiet time can ever really lose its usefulness um, and its functionality. I think that obviously with different seasons in life, you can fill your quiet time with different things. Um, I always like to fill my quiet time with my priorities and so it becomes a very functional time for me, especially when I am in the stage of having young children and I've got a toddler, a baby on the way, a three-year-old, a five-year-old, a nine-year-old and a ten-year-old, my life is still very physical. I get touched out, I get, you know, I'm changing nappies, I'm bathing, I'm hugging, I'm answering questions, I'm giving instructions, I'm reading aloud, I'm homeschooling, I'm cooking, and, you know, you're playing with them, you're disciplining them, you're just full on, they're in your arms, they're on you, they're all over you, they're talking to you, they want your attention, and that is draining. And if I had to do that all day, and I didn't sort of dictate some kind of end to it, or just like, like quiet time is, it's like a pause, then I think I would not get anything done sustainably and consistently, because I'd be burnt out. Whether it was for homeschooling, or just homemaking, or child raising, all of those things take effort. They take a lot of effort. And I think that if you don't schedule yourself some kind of mental and physical break every day, then you're going to burn out. And I think 
that these days we're all very big on the hustle mentality. And I love a good hustle. I like to, you know, have a few days or a few weeks when you know it's busier than usual and you know that you're going to be feet on the ground the whole time and there's not going to be much pause. But I, for one, I cannot, I can only speak for myself, but I know that me and my family, we cannot sustain that for very long before everyone is tired. And when I get tired as the mother and homemaker, then the whole house begins to fall apart. Um, I know this is like a fairly kind of full on intro for a quiet time, but I believe it really is that important. Quiet time gives my home day to day a break from the hustle. It allows me to pause whatever is happening, whether it's house cleaning, um, even homeschooling. It allows that break for everyone in the home, not just me, to work towards, look forward to, and to just have some time to be alone or be play together or whatever you wanna do. Quiet time is also great for older children because it gives them a break from the younger children. Because, you know, I'm really big on having my children do things together and they do naturally spend a lot of time together. They share bedrooms, you know, they're outside together. I have my older boys helping me with teaching the little kids simple things. But my older boys do want to have a break. They want, they've got hobbies and they have things that they would like to do without the younger children hovering around them. And so it's good for them as well to get that break and to have that alone time or go, they might go fishing or they'll go for a walk or they'll build their Lego, something that is quiet, that they can feel rested before we continue on the rest of our day. Biggest thing that I use quiet time for, the priorities that I have, which I would call extracurricular priorities. Um, they're priorities to me. If I didn't do them, they wouldn't affect my motherhood or homemaking or things that I do put first in the day. But I have chosen that if I'm going to make the effort to have quiet time and train my kids for quiet time and establish those rules, then I want to use that time for things that are important to me, but that make me feel like I'm working towards something that is, I'm not going to get all like, oh, it's just for me. And it's just, no, I just feel like, um, for example, exercise. Exercise is important to me. I think that, you know, I'm in my sixth pregnancy and I believe that I have to remain strong and fit to get through each one, to get through each stage um, as well as I can. And so exercise for me is really important. And so making the time to exercise is and to exercise consistently can be difficult. But because I know I've got two hours every day of quiet time, I know I can get four to five workouts in a week and there's really no excuse not to. So it's those things that are important to me, like creating these YouTube videos. I would not be able to do that if I didn't have quiet time in my day. And it has to happen um, with quiet and with the right surroundings. But the, if I didn't establish a quiet time routine, none of this would be happening. And I'd be, be thinking about making a YouTube channel and I'd be thinking about maybe blogging one day, never being able to do it because I didn't create the time for me to be able to take on those things. Now, the rules of quiet time. Obviously in each home, you can have whatever rules you like. I think that sticking to these rules is pretty universal in the way of um, if you don't then your quiet time is going to be full of distractions it's not going to be real quiet time um, and you're not going to get the full functionality of quiet time and it's going to be blurred lines and I think it'll be something that you won't be able to keep up you won't be able to be consistent and if that's something that you're really striving for then you could probably adopt the same rules that I do they're not horribly outlandish they're just very effective one is the first rule is no talking to me. My kids know that when I'm doing quiet time, they don't talk to me unless it's necessary, but they know that it's not really the time of day to just strike up random conversation. It's not really the time of day to tell me the dream they had last night or what so-and-so said. They know that for those two hours, rarely do they come and speak to me. The second rule is no screens. And this is hard for me. And when I had morning sickness just a few months ago or weeks ago, a month ago, 
Um, I did rely on screens a lot more than I wanted to just because my quiet time was not filled with anything functional. It was not filled with workouts or blogging or anything. It was, I was going to bed and I was exhausted and I had to sleep. And so I was allowing them to put a DVD on or to watch Netflix or something for that time while I slept. And it was hard to train them out of that again. My boys are playing outside, that's what you can hear. You can rely on screen sometimes, and on the weekends they get a treat and they are allowed to have screen time, but during the week I like to keep it screen free. The reason being is I find that it actually creates more fighting. They're actually more noisy. They get more restless quickly. They don't stay quiet for the two hours. And it's just not something I want in my home. I don't want my children having two hours of screen time every day. Um, for me, I don't think it's healthy for young minds. And so that's something that I really work on to really keep at a minimum. The third rule is no complaining if you're bored. If my children come to me and say, mom, I'm bored, they know what I'm going to say. And I'm going to tell them, well, there's gardens that need weeding. There are basins that need cleaning. There's washing that needs folding. And so yeah, they don't come to me. They know that that's the only thing I'm gonna give them. And that is always my rule. If they come to me and say, I'm bored, they'll be given a job and they must complete that job. So no child ever comes to me complaining that they're bored, except for my latest trainee. They do come and tell me they're bored, but they've only done that twice. And so far they have been given a job to sweep the floor and I haven't seen them for a few days. So I think, I think I cured that problem, but I only want to have a rule for that, I think, because they will come to you. Quiet time can be boring. Like your children have to find something to do. And if they don't have screens, then they have to do something. And doing something quietly for some children is a task, but it's still something that I think you should teach them. And so um, if you allow them to come to you with and saying, oh, I'm bored, and then you start becoming that person going, oh, well, you can do this, or I could help you with this, or you could do this, then they're always going to be coming to you because you're just going to be the only thing that they feel is going to cure their boredom. And for me, I don't like that. I like to be distraction free. I don't want to have to keep pausing and talking to a child because they couldn't be bothered finding something to do for themselves. My fourth rule, which is kind of a new one, is no hovering. And it might sound a bit mean, but my kids find loopholes. And their loophole was that, yes, they didn't come to me saying they were bored, but they hovered. They were just there in like just over there, like not quite in my space, but not quite, but not doing something. And they would just sit there and they'd start, you know, draping themselves over lounges and then there'd be more than one of them there. Then they'd start fighting. And then it was just this constant, and I go, what are you doing? And I would say, hey, what are you up to? And they're like, nothing. And they just stare at you. So I made that rule. You're not allowed to hover. I don't want to see hovering people all around me. It's just frustrating and it doesn't really solve the problem because eventually there would be three of them there and they would start fighting and they would start being noisy. And next thing you know, they had woken someone up and that made me very cranky. So that was a new rule that I've done, like no hovering. So. Be aware of loopholes. If your kids, they will find loopholes in your rules and don't allow them to, don't go, oh, well, I didn't make that a rule, so that's okay. No, just make a new rule. Be strict because quiet time is not only for you to have some functional alone time, it's for them to, to use their imaginations, to play together, to learn to play without fighting together. Um, it's no, it's not going to harm a child to have to just, you know, lessen the noise level and do something constructive. So how to make quiet time as productive as possible for you. And that is one, I've already spoken of it, know your priorities. So for me, I have several priorities in my, I would say day-to-day -day life that I want to get done. And so that is exercising, um, maintaining my blog post schedule, which make the next YouTube video, that's my new priority. So that's a third priority that's snuck in there. My priorities aren't like, I don't have numerous ones for my quiet time, but exercising, blogging, they're up there. 
Um, and so whatever priorities you have in your day, you can chuck them into your quiet time. I always like to do things that I can't do with children. So even if I have a massive, great big pile of folding to do, which I do right now, um, I'm not going to do that in my quiet time because I can do that when the kids are around. I can do that at night when we're watching TV. I don't need to take this small pocket of peace and just fold washing before the dinner rush begins and before the nighttime and the bedtime workload hits, I like to feel like I've had a moment in the day that was mine. Second thing to make your, is have a to-do list. If you don't have priorities and you're just thinking, well, I don't do any of those things, what can I do? Try and make a to-do list. This will make it feel functional. Even if you're on your to-do list is like paint your nails or have a shower or have a 40 minute nap, like have a to-do list that makes you feel like you if there are things that you want to do or even if it is I want to get something clean or I want to get um, a dress sewn or you want to get something sewn or have ironing done it doesn't matter what it is if it's something that you feel you want to do in that quiet time have a to-do list have a weekly to-do list have a daily to-do list because I have had quiet time for a number of years since I started mothering so 10 years ago and um, there were plenty of years where I completely, I feel like now when I look back, I completely wasted that quiet time. I would just sit around watching TV, um, which at the time felt great. But I realized there were so many things back then that I was like, oh, well, I want to learn to sew. But I just thought I don't have the time for that. And I want to do this and I want to do that. And I didn't do anything. And now that I have decided to use a priority approach to my quiet time, I have gotten so much more done. And, um... I also have another blog post on block scheduling. That is also how I kind of fit different priorities into different areas of my day. So I will link that as well. Probably one of the most crucial things for a functional quiet time is remove distractions. For me, um, if I don't have a to-do list or any priorities for that day, which is rare, but sometimes I do choose to ignore them. And if I do choose to do that, then I will usually find that I will spend what I intend to be five minutes will be an hour and a half scrolling Instagram or doing something aimless on my computer or just being aimless. And while I embrace just resting for a little while, I'm not on myself to be never having just a moment of just wasting time. But if you're doing that every day and if you have your phone next to you or if you say, I want to have a nap for 40 minutes, I really need a power nap, don't take your phone with you. And if you do have a things that you want to get done, try to elim eliminate the distraction. Try you want to know your priorities, have a to-do list, remove distractions. Now, troubleshooting. This is on my blog post, so I will mention it now. Um, phasing out of afternoon naps. So that is what I call a new trainee to my quiet time. I currently have one. And they are new because they're not having a solid, like at least an hour nap in the afternoon. And so they're up and they think that the day keeps going. And I'm like, so it's about saying, no, there's rules here. Mummy's not available right now. You know, you go and play. Um, obviously for young children, give them options. Most of my children phase out of the naps when they're around four. So for me, it's perfectly fine for a four-year-old to play with their sisters and brothers or alone um, as long as they have things to do so you do have to provide options before the quiet time begins but you don't need to be too elaborate you don't need to be okay you can destroy a room while I'm having my quiet time and that's another rule that I have another thing is dealing with a disruptor so that is a child who it can be a problematic thing or it can just be an odd occasion if it's an odd occasion, I will give them a sort of a few chances and then the rule is if you cannot play with your siblings and if you cannot, if you're causing trouble, if you're being noisy, you know, if they're just disrupting the quiet time, then they have to lay in bed and they have to lay in bed quietly. They're not allowed to move, they're not allowed to get up, they're allowed to take a few books and that is it. Um, I don't really have disruptors because I have trained that out of them. You probably will experience a bit more of this if you have quiet time with children who have who aren't used to it. They're not going to be fully used to the rules. So I would probably put forward the rules as a whole and say this is not acceptable. Give them options before you start and 
um, tell them what's going to happen if they disrupt. Last but not least, mess. Mess is something that I don't tolerate. So I don't allow my children to, like I said, destroy a room um, or like the toy room or their bedroom and then just walk away and go, oh, well, quiet time's over. If they made a mess during quiet time, then they don't resume any of their normal activities until that mess is completely cleaned. I don't think you should have to allow your children to go crazy in order for you to get some peace. You can train them to be responsible, to, to be constructive, to doesn't need to be them trashing the entire toy room because it's quiet time and because they can. Um, don't allow that because you don't want a functional time in your day to eat into other parts of your day which are just important. After quiet time, I'm moving into the pre-dinner prep. I'm moving into, you know, doing some gardening and ending the day, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not going to go and clean up a mess for an hour that my children made. And I think don't give your kids allowances. You don't need to. Children can be just as functional and as disciplined as the effort that you put into them and that does mean having strong ground rules following through disciplining and not allowing um, loopholes so not allowing a child to just discover something that they can do because you didn't expressly say don't allow it and you need to be strong in this like I'm big on child training so the rules of quiet time are no talking to me no screens no hovering and no complaining that you're bored. They're my four rules. All my kids know these rules and if I didn't have these rules then I would not have a functional quiet time. So how to make quiet time as functional as possible. Know your priorities, have a to-do list and remove distraction. And if you can work on all those things then you will probably always have a functional quiet time. So the posts that kind of coincide with this topic, if you want to go and read them, and I'm pretty sure, and they also have some printable freebies on there as well, is my, obviously, the quiet time post, which I am definitely referencing for this video. I also have the block schedule post for busy mothers and the block schedule post for children. And they coincide, obviously, because in my day, I'm sliding my quiet time into a big section of my day and into my block schedule. So if you're ever wondering how you can have more time to yourself in a healthy way, how you can have some creative time, have some functional time, have time to exercise, um, have time to take a nap, have time to do something extracurricular that you would like to do in your life. So until next time, if you liked this video, again, I always say this, please like it. It helps me immensely in the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more of this, if you want to see more of my videos, then subscribe. I will do a video every week on motherhood, child training and homeschooling. I'm going to finish my coffee and go and do a workout. And until next time, bye.